out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Reviewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Good afternoon. Um, welcome to another wonderful outpouring program on this Saturday afternoon. And my name is Rex Henry, and I'm sitting in for uh, Sister Marva Berkeley, uh, Minister Marva Berkeley. And um, we are again talking with uh, our special guest from last week. Uh, this is our part two of a discussion on um, how people who are in business get interrupted by God and get involved in, in the work of the Lord. And last week we kind of laid a foundation for that. So uh, this program, if you're new to it, is called the Outpouring Program. And we spend a lot of time talking about how the Holy Spirit moves with people, how He um, gets us into that deeper, meaningful relationship with Him. And today we're taking it from a different angle. We're going to talk a little bit about the bigger kingdom of God and what God is doing so that you could help to find your place in it. Um, so let me take this uh, uh, time to just give a few, uh, get our guest to introduce um, his thoughts for today's program and then we're going to start um, engaging in it. Um, Brother Lord? Yes, we want to thank you for having me on the program once again. Uh, thanks to the viewers. I trust that whatever happens today will be edifying to you and to establish a more uh, lasting relationship with God, one, and to redefine society in terms of where we want to take um, our nation, our country, our churches, wherever we find ourselves as people. So. I think today we want to clarify a few things in terms of how the kingdom functions. We want to clarify and we want to uh, not redefine, we just want to bring clarity and definition to when we talk about the kingdom, where we find ourselves inside of there, respective of where we are inside of um, the, the world. Um, and and I, I want to see the world rather than the church because it is the church that must influence the world. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where we find our place and our significance and influence in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. How do we shift uh, the atmosphere? How do we shift society? This is where we are called to influence others to bring um, rational thoughts and actions to a world that we know is in our people. The Bible declares that creation grows until the manifestation of the sons, manifestation of God. Of the sons of God. So we just want to um, reestablish our dominance and to say that we are responsible. We take, we take responsibility for what is happening. And um, so therefore we must understand where we find ourselves, one. Um, and uh, from that context, we can um, then begin to influence society and others uh, around us. Okay, so for our viewers today, um, let's, I'm going to make a quick recap for last week. Last program, um, for those of you who get a chance to see it, last program we were um, bringing together a couple of elements. One is this, the outpouring program and the move of the Spirit and how God moves on people and get them engaged in the action of ministry. That's one. Two, we were discussing a new organization, uh, well, uh, old idea, but a new organization that is reaching out to young men on the streets. And these young men, uh, Pastor Lord, um, in that sense, a pastor is a person who shepherds people. And he's been taking a lot of his 
interest onto the streets, his impacting of young men on the streets, and we kind of touched on some of the things that motivated him to use some of his resources to get into that. In addition, we just kind of scooted around a little bit about something that we're doing on uh, Father's Day weekend, where we are attempting to have a broader coalition of people across denominational lines to come together to, to um, to see if we could, we could have a redemptive movement. There is already a movement for prayer, for revival on the island, um, called the, uh, that's a mobilization Tobago. And we've got people from across the island coming together for prayer, they're coming together for um, training, and a number of things like that. And this movement, see great value in this men's movement called Men of Purpose. Uh, in the, the island of Trinidad, there's already a Men of Purpose there that's, that's doing some things in, from, from a local church standpoint, but the Men of Purpose movement in Tobago is across denominational lines. They're inviting leaders, uh, young people, older people, and attempting to kind of tap into those people across the community. And, and there are a lot of other people who see great value in what they're doing, and therefore this program is gonna, we're gonna develop a little bit of that. Um, on today's program. I wanted to not bore you too much because you know sometimes your, your viewers are sitting there you think you already know what's what we're going to talk about and and stuff so we want to take it from a different angle. Um, in the book of Ephesians um, chapter 2 somewhere around verse 11 uh, Paul tells us that Christians were strangers from the coven commonwealth of Israel and aliens from the covenants of promise. The idea that, the, that God has some promises through Abraham that came upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Now Abraham, uh, God said concerning Abraham, I know Abraham, that he will command his children after him, that I would be able to perform that which I've spoken concerning him. And when God spoke to Abraham, the things that God spoke to Abraham, Abraham would have had Two, two generations of sons after him, Isaac and then Jacob. And then they would have gone into, he had 12 sons. They went into Egypt, which were there for 400 years. So if, let me say, they had four generations um, in every 100 years, that would have been 16 generations on top of the four we just mentioned. And then God told them, I will bring you out in the fourth generation, which means that they would have another four generations that would come out. So we're talking about 16 plus 4 plus 4. So God is a God of nations, he's a God of generations. And what we wanna talk about this morning, this evening, sorry, is how we are attempting to have an outreach that mobilizes um, leaders uh, to begin to think of how do I find my place in a community where there is a God who thinks multi-generationally. In other words, if I died tomorrow, it doesn't affect what God is doing. Um, if brother Lord dies, it, it doesn't affect what God is going. That God is still multi generational. He's thinking about our sons. He's thinking about people that we impact. We, he's thinking about how to continue what He's doing. God is not coming up with a new idea with every generation. So, the the I'm going to engage. The, the the question to engage now would be: when we talk to young men about finding their place and, and coming off the streets, and putting down the drugs, and finding purpose. Um, I, I, I know that you've, you have in your heart something about structure and that, he, that, that uh, Paul had a model in his mind when he talked about from the book of Ephesians chapter four. Tell us what you're, what you're, what you're how you, sh you think that that can be shaped in terms of young men finding purpose and structure? Um, you know, it's, it's very interesting to sit back and look at a country in terms of where we were and where we are heading. And if we're not deliberate in lean whole, the trends and movements, we're going to find ourselves in a place, wake up one morning in a place with a next generation that has no reference point for where we started or where uh, the Bible talks about ancient landmarks. Okay. In um, 
The book of Genesis, um, as you talk about the generations of Abraham, uh, it says that there was a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. Yeah. And the, the, the influence that Joseph had on Egypt was lost to that generation, that new generation, mm -hmm. to the extent that they, because they saw them as prosperous, they saw them as a threat, not realizing that that Abrahamic uh, generation really was a blessing to wherever they were found. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we could find ourselves in a place where we misunderstand the context in which a, a generation should find its place because we, we are not purposeful in, in continuing in established, we don't know where we started or what we are, what are the foundations. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, because we've lost what the foundation is, anything could happen. So when we talk in the context of uh, young men taking them off the thing, we have to bring them into something. We have to establish a, a place from which they're going to begin a new journey. And this is where we, as the elders, so to speak, must establish a position that they could take that from that position and continue into the next generation, as you were saying, in terms of uh, multi-generational transferring blessings from one. You know, God is a God of blessing. He's a God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. He, yeah. It was the same. If you go back in Genesis, you will see it is the same promise he's repeating in every generation. Yeah. He's not changing anything. Mm -hmm. And it is the same with us. His intention is to multiply, to increase. Mm -hmm. uh, so that each succeeding generation begins to inherit what the covenant promises. Mm -hmm. So when we bring these young men into, from where they are, so to speak, into a new environment, what we're trying to do is to reestablish some foundations and hope that they will take that, model it, and take it forward. That is generally the the the, the, the dream. I want to zero kind of drill down to something I was giving a lot of thought to this morning about personal identity. Mm. Um, I was thinking about Moses. Um, Moses found himself as a prince in Egypt. Mm. He found himself as a shepherd in Midian. Mm -hmm. Now, Midian was technically a cousin. Yeah. because they were the descendants of Abraham by uh, the third wife, Keturah. Mm -hmm. And it, it is possible that out of Midian, he was able to understand some things about God that he couldn't get from the Jews that were in slavery because of the fact that sometimes slavery can remove your identity, it changes mm. your name, it changes your value systems and that kind of thing. But Median was of course a, a society where these people were free and therefore they had time to m meditate and work out things and that kind of thing. But I, I consider the possibility of growing up in a household of a people who do not identify with you. They have a different language. Mm. They, they didn't name you a Jewish language, a mm. Jewish name. You're, mm. you're carrying an Egyptian name. Mm -hmm. You're living in an Egyptian house. You are defined by characteristics that are not part of the people that you are. Mm -hmm. um, I want to explore this idea. How does a person discover identity? Now, I'm using this against the background of, let's suppose a young man is, is coming from a single mother home. You're, you're, the, the guys on the, in school, you can't process some of the things that have been taught in school, so therefore people call you stupid. Um, they, they say that you're incapable of learning because you couldn't process. Uh, maybe you might be dyslexic a little bit, and therefore some of the words are jumble in your mind when, mm -hmm. you, when you read them. And you, you consider yourself a failure in school. Maybe you didn't have some subjects, maybe you didn't have enough. And there is this idea of trying to figure out who I am uh, and then the guy said, join your gang. You know, um, there's an easy way of making some money or we're going to use you to spot for us. So if you see anything happen, call us and we're going to be able to run and that kind of story. How does, the, the, how does a person discover identity? How do I define myself? 
how do I find myself? Yeah, that is very interesting because um, your identity must be established out of an experience that you have or out of, it, it must start someplace. Uh, one of the, the places in the Bible um, where uh, God affirmed Jesus, mm -hmm. this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. We establish his identity in, in, in God. One of the first things we, we, we have to always do with a lot of these young men is to first begin to take them out from a, uh, an environment which they had identified with. Now, this is, this, these are my experience. Right. So what do you have? You have these young men who will come and they have come from a particular background. They have learned that, this, how to, to live and survive in the street, how mm -hmm. to live and survive among people who are not trusted, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, see that, we see it happen all the time. We see it happen. There's a particular young man, for example, that I'm working with now. I've been working with him now just about two years. And uh, it really is amazing to see how they begin to slowly reconfigure. So they will they would talk to you and you 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 understand clearly from where they are coming from. Coming from. Mm -hmm. And they know it's coming from a place I want to trust you, but I don't know if I could trust you. Uh, so they, and what you have to do is to be very uh, not you have to understand where where they are. Mm -hmm and position yourself in a place where they could actually see through you in terms of your motives towards them. Mm -hmm. Because but what you're doing is yeah, you, are, you are trying to establish in them a new identity from which they can platform to move forward. Mm -hmm. Because where they came from is a place of mistrust, mm -hmm. is a place where Maybe we not take it all. Yeah. Betrayal and all mm -hmm. those kind of things. But yeah. you, so you have to be, uh, be extremely careful that what you say, what you do, who you are, who you are, is 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 so consistent. Mm -hmm. The one key thing that always work is your established position in concern and love for them. The Bible says the love never fails. Mm -hmm. And that is why Jesus was, was super uh, successful, because God is love. Mm -hmm. Everything he did was out from the background and back, backdrop of love. Even his rebuke, if you study it, mm -hmm. you, would, you would understand his rebuke from other places from love. And what I have found is that once you show them that you're genuinely concerned about their, where they are, they slowly adjust. Okay. It takes time. Mm -hmm. But you see the adjustment taking place until uh, this particular young man I think uh, telling you about you know he was uh, at my place this week and I could see a further shift. I could see that he was relaxing and he began to converse with me from a different place. Mm -hmm. But uh, but before you go on, I, I think there's a question burning in my mind. Yeah. How long have you been at this at this process developing your your understanding of this process that, that to reach to these young men on the street? Well, in, in terms of... Well, in terms of developing the, 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 the passion, the techniques, the ideas, I and, would say, and how long you've been actively maybe stepping into this, this realm of... Um, I would say we're looking seven years. Okay. It is it, 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 a slow process because you really have to... One of the things you have to also do is that you also have to, I don't want to say this cautious, you also have to guard yourself. Okay. Because the, the thing is that you are stepping into a new um, environment yourself. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, as you use the word, we interrupted by God to do this. But you for yourself is stepping into, into something that you really don't know. You have, there's no map. Mm -hmm. There is no textbook. 
to, to teach you how to navigate the, this environment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what gives you the confidence to step into that? How do you ensure that the outcome that you intend will be achieved? Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have to start from we have to start from a place where we express genuine concern. And you, the, 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 you know, they are seeing that when you speak the truth, you don't need to to worry. You don't need to make excuses. When you speak the truth once, whether you forget or you didn't forget, the truth remains the truth. Right. If you lie, you have to remember. Yeah, you have to make up another lie you have to, to make back another, it up. Right. Yeah, yeah. So if you establish a position of love, you. you but let me add another question to, to that because we're drilling down in the economy of God. A, a person is coming out of a place of distrust. Let me say I was selling drugs for the, the big guy around the corner. Yeah. I am looking to pull something over on him because I'm trying to build myself to be like him. Mm. A man in the community says, look, I don't want my whole community to become about drug selling. I don't want my, all my young men to be thinking at some point in time they're going to have to pull a gun on me. Yeah in order to pay the drug pusher because they bad spend his money or some kind of thing. And that my, I don't want my society to keep collapsing down upon itself so, so that my community has no future. But even when you are attempting to build trust in this guy in the community, he himself may not be able to help himself when he takes the handout you give him mm -hmm. and instead of using it as a hand up, he use it as something to pay off the guy who yeah. he owed money. Yeah. Right? Talk about that experience. This idea that, that about being aware of the fact that the guy may want to come out, but also have some liabilities in the world that you're trying to pull him out of. Yeah, that is very interesting. I had two experiences along those lines. One of the experiences was that this, this young man had... Um, taking some drugs from another young man. And he lost it. Somebody stole the drugs. Wow, okay. And he called me and he said, you know, the intro, the trend in him is not, they're not in, in trouble. I told him, I said, um, so he was looking for money to pay, pay back. Pay off the drug. Sure. I told him, I said, my money, this money, men of purpose money, is not for drugs. We don't do that. We don't. I say, go and face the guy, and you explain him to him what happened. Now, I, I knew, of course, that um, that was not pff, easy. A, an easy thing to mm -hmm. do. And, but we had to, we have to take a position, and this is what, what we do, we must take a position. There's no compromise, there's no middle grounds in terms of, well, okay, I mean, you have to be, and boy, we got to do something behind, you know, and then so on and so on. And he called me and he said to me, he said, you know what? When I approach a guy, he tell me, he said, don't worry, that's a small thing. Okay. And, and so what I'm saying is that when you approach this thing from the position which take it, we can see an intervention. I mean, it, so what I'm saying is this is not a route or a route that is easy for everybody to, um, to take. So one another experience we had was that we were helping this young man and we gave him some money. And he took the money and he went and he paid off. But he, we, we were helping him to establish a small business. And he took the money and ran and paid the, the, his debts. Mm -hmm. We never saw him after that. And the small business that we helped him never emerged. We lost contact with him. I mean, nothing happened to him, but we just did not um, follow through with that um, position because he, so I'm saying to well, What would that experience teach you as a person who's doing this, yeah. knowing that you're going to get more young men off the streets, yeah. they're going to have liabilities to, to drug pushers, yeah. they want to change their lives, but they're kind of hooked. Yeah. Well, okay. again, I was, I was saying to you earlier, there are certain safeguards we have to take. Those experiences now taught us, as we we're approaching these people, there are more, they, we, have to, they, we have to factor in other um, measures to ensure that he comes to a certain realization before we 
uh, take him to a, to a particular place. So there is more, some of them would require more intervention and we need to, by experience, know what are those interventions to take place so that, we, so that those eventualities are dealt with. Of course, if the guy owes money and so on, we will have to probably find a way to deal with the whole scenario. And there, are we, there are other examples we could think, but we don't have time to go, to, go into all of it. But it's really a very dynamic situation once we talk in drugs and once we talk in that kind of a, um, environment uh, thing. But suffice it to say that our experience have showed us that at the end of the day, it is once we approach this thing from a consistent place that we see results. Well, we're running out of time, and um, in the next two minutes, we're hoping to, we're going to give uh, Brother Lord a chance to, the pastor of the streets, a chance to, to make his final statements. But uh, folks, we're trying to pull to get together some leaders, some young men who are also could be positive examples. And we're trying to, to reverse the, the gang culture. So coming in onto Father's Day, that weekend, uh, the Thursday, the Friday, and the Saturday. We want to gather together. We're going to be up at the uh, multipurpose unit at the Scarborough New Testament Church of God. And we're hoping to see some of you out there and uh, your sons out there. It's going to be mainly, a, it's going to be a man's only thing at uh, this time. And we are attempting to have Brother Lord and his team, Pastor Lord, his team, uh, maybe a special guest or two, um, develop, help us develop a mechanism to get more men involved in this process of mentoring and developing and strengthening, right? So we're believing God for a shift in Tobago, but we're not going to do it in a gap. We're going to do it with some structure, some sense. And as he, uh, uh, he pointed out, um, if we can't transfer the gains into the next generation. We're gonna lose the next generation. We're gonna to have to do it again. So we don't wanna do it that way. We wanna we wanna put some institutional framework in place. We wanna transfer this to, to people. We wanna build with you and learn from your experiences. And then we wanna get this in a way that we can we can do this everywhere. Um, so I'm gonna just invite him to give us some closing remarks. Yeah, but the two things I wanna mention, one is that as you say, it's put an institutional framework. One of the things that we have to do, and I think most critical, is to stop the flow in of, 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 of these young men, of, of this, this, this culture, stop the flow into the street. Okay. We need parents to take up the role, very serious. Mm -hmm. We have to cut it off, for, because we already have quite a huge uh, population to deal with, okay. to transform. But we don't want to flow into that anymore. Okay. So we need to cut that off. So we're going into the schools? Yes, so we, right. we, need, we, need, we need to do an intervention there to close that gap. Right. And then deal with this, that which we already have. Else if we have a constant flow into that, I mean, it will frustrate even businessmen pumping funds into that, because if it, there, there's no the end. There's no end to it. Right. And um, secondly, there are a lot of people I've met that are willing to work, but they want to work from the background. They want to, they don't want to get their hands into it and so because it's, a, it's a, let's face it, it's, a, it's hard work. They don't want to make themselves a target. Yeah. Right. They don't want to make themselves a target. Right. So want to be part of this function so that we could involve all. Okay. So thank you for viewing the outpouring program with Minister Marvel Berkeley. My name is Rex Henry and we had Pastor Richard Lord of the streets with us in Men of Purpose. And we look forward to seeing you next week. We're going to have a part three of this program. Lord bless you and keep you and uh, see you again. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour